All right, what's up, ZB Nation? It's your boy, Josh Wolf, and today we are coding on ZB. And uh, I'm starting a bit late today, 2.19. I was up literally all night, did not go to sleep until like 8 o'clock this morning. And uh, I was reflecting as I was having a quick shower before I jumped on the stream. The old adage that open source is only free if your time is worth nothing. Like there is a lot of operational complexity involved in like developing, deploying open source. Um, and at Komunda where I'm working, we're dog fooding uh, ZB hard and developing a lot of operational kind of uh, knowledge about how you deploy it and how you operate it. That means that we're running into the edges and the edge cases, discovering them. So I was working on some of that last night with uh, gRPC connections to the broker. And so I was also thinking in the shower about, you know, okay, what are we going to, what am I going to do today? I'm going to start off. I'm going to make this a regular thing by going through the uh, ZB GitHub to have a look at what is new <clears throat> and coming down the pipe in, in ZB. ZB land. What's next? I'm all about the future. So let's have a look through the, I'll make this a regular feature. Let's go through the GitHub and have a look. We've got 226 open issues in here right now. Um, the other thing that's interesting to look at, another view to look at is the notifications view. This is the one that I use to see what's happening right now. Let's have a look. Here we go. Okay. Add call activity section to the doc. So that's going to be new. I usually get rid of these um, chore, especially de dependency uh, changes. Move export a clear state to service. Oh, could be interesting. Let's have a look. Get the workflow outcome. This one is going to be big. This is awaitable workflow outcomes. Verify that call activity works as multi instance. A call activity. Okay, so there's a new BPM symbol coming. Deploy workflow with multi instance call activity. Sig sig on export a clear state a bug fix async snapshot director is not cleanly removed is not removed cleanly on failover partitions no longer making progress flaky test specify variables to include in workflow result let's have a look at that uh, single node test yeah cluster files fast goes in weird state define the called workflow using an expression what's that Exporter manager test should remove exporter from states, flaky, yeah, whatever, move theme files, whatever. Um, atomics, segment, creation causes small processing performance. Drops. Okay. Cluster does not bootstrap and is stuck in unreachable loop. Yeah, we'll use the notifications to do this. Okay, BPMN workflows, add call activities section. Add a new section for call overview. green button no um files change let's have a look at what's this thing okay here's a bpmn file xml business process model notation call activities okay a call activity aka reusable sub process Okay, it's a subroutine. Okay, so you can put a sub process, but in another file, which means that you can reuse it between different workflows. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it can be invoked from the workflow. So I'm actually doing this at the moment um, with some of the workflows that I'm using. And the way I'm doing it is uh, I have a worker that invokes another workflow. So it's a generic worker and it uses like a, a header template. Just activate it. Okay, this will make, this will surface it. Maybe, I'm not sure how much, diff how different this will be. It means you don't have to write the worker, I guess. When a call activity is entered, then the new workflow instance of the reference workflow is created, defining the call workflow. Either as a process ID or process ID expression. That's interesting. 
Defines the variable which holds the BPMN process ID. Okay, so it's like a pointer. Okay. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, I'm going to have to document it. Um, don't think there'll be any support needed in the client for this. It's all going to be server side. Okay. It's going to need a release note. This is a pull request. So. Okay, it's interesting. It doesn't have a um, fixes X, Y, or Z. Needs a release note, yo. I'm going to put those two on it. That's how I'm going to find it. Okay, cool. Do nothing about that for now. Move export a clear state to service to ensure dependency. Move clear export a state method to own service. This is like reading the daily news. You know, you get up in the morning and read the newspaper. This is, this is me reading the newspaper in the morning. Move clear export a state method to own service to make partition dependency explicit. Okay. The DAO is unclear, says uh, Minsky. Yeah, seems pretty uh, esoteric to me. Test engine, verify that call activity works as multi instance. Okay, so you can do multi instance. Interesting, good to know. Um, specify variables to include in workflow result. That's weird. Okay, network fail. Um, okay, yeah, this is the create workflow instance with request, result request. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're adding this new feature to ZB where you can start a workflow and then you can await the response. Oh, huge, hugely uh, requested feature. That's what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to start implementing that. We'll see if it's actually running in the latest snapshot. I haven't checked it and then implement it in the client. Removing the response record for the gateway, we do not need it since we do not write it to the stream. What do you think? Okay, it's free internal kind of stuff. Why do we have two types here? Is this really necessary? Can we just return the same type? Oh, check out my new watch. This is an absolute classic, man. I should Today's show should be sponsored by Absolute Vodka for my absolute classic watch. Check it out. That's not the right time. It's straight out of the 80s, man. It's a Casio Illuminator. Boom. My God. The Illuminator. Man, when that thing came out, it was like, dude, a light. So good. So I can tell the time. That's what that thing does. Um, what do we got? hasn't been merged yet okay to find the work called workflow using an expression so that's how you can grab it out of the variables it's interesting atomic segment creation causes small processing performance drops <clears throat> this I'm interested in because um, for my own deployed systems I'm interested in the performance obviously and then I have people asking about it all the time One thing we discovered um, on Commander Cloud is that the longer the snapshot period is, the longer it takes your nodes to recover, depending on what's been happening. Because if you have a 15 minute snapshot period, and the way ZB works is that it has a, an append only event stream, an event log that it's appending events to. 
that gets replicated across multiple partitions, multiple machines, nodes, brokers. And it also has like an in-memory sharded database of the state of the system. Now, if, if it goes down, when you bring it back up, it can use the last snapshot and then it replays the log to rebuild the in-memory state. Now, if you have a 15 minute period there, let's say that it fails at minute 14, you got 14 minutes of event log to replay to rebuild the state. And if you have multiple connected workers, like let's say you have, I don't know, 20 or 30 or 40, 50 workers connected to the broker, requesting jobs every say 30 seconds, then you're gonna have a lot of like job, activate job requests to replay. This is my theory, I'm hypothesizing here because maybe someone will come back and say, um, actually we don't replay those activate job requests, but I do know that they get written to the, to the event log. And what I noticed was um, for one of my nodes in Kubernetes, it would keep getting rescheduled when it was trying to reboot. It looks like while it was re reconstructing the state of the system and <clears throat> it just went down for, for like 30, 45 minutes. And what eventually had it come back up was I moved all of my workers to another broker and then it came back up. So it's like it was trying to process the log and it was also trying to um, service all the workers that were actually running because the workers didn't go down, only the broker went down. So they're continuing to ask for stuff and that impacted the uh, recovery of the broker. So a shorter snapshot period will actually make that recovery faster. So like snapshots every five minutes. So that's what, that's what I'm uh, gonna try next is five minute snapshots. That kind of stuff, you, you you can read about it, but you're probably not going to pay much attention to it till you actually run into it. And like, we're running into it and we can't read about it except in places like this where it's like real esoteric. And then you got to try and figure out how does this apply practically. And then don't worry, I'll write about it later. We can pay for some consulting or something from Komunda. Because open source is only free if your time is worth nothing. You'll end up paying for it one way or another. You either pay for an internal resource or you pay for some consultants to come in. And hopefully the best case is they're going to impart their wisdom uh, to your people. And then your people are going to pick up the ball and run with it rather than just being like a, a heroin addict. Uh, I deployed a workflow which contains never sloop, which I mean is that you just keep paying people to come and do it for you and you never figure out how to do it yourself. I created around CA, circa, um, 300 instances to see how the cluster and the processing behaves. It seems quite stable, but we observed some smaller drops. Oh, let me open the Twitch chat in case uh, some of you will drop by live. Has been known to happen. Has been known to happen. Twitch. And, um, you know, I'll be archiving the stream for the YouTubes. We can pause that. Oh, and we should also say, yo, we're coding with ZB on the Twitter. Cluster, uh, let me, let me, let me get through this one. Let me get through this one. What does it actually say? Oh, is there an error message that I've seen? Mm, no not a fan of that error message of this logging format if only it had structured logging like a uh, seek This is what happened to my cluster. Um, this could be it. If you don't understand what this is, don't worry, neither do I, but I'm not letting that get to me. Uh, the only way to learn anything is to just look at it and go, this looks all like Greek to me. That's how you learn how to speak Greek. Echaristo. <laughs> I 
I remember sitting on a plane flying into um, Athens and the passenger next to me she was showing me the Greek alphabet and I was like it all looks like Greek to me very briefly and indirectly mentioned so it seems we can't exactly the most confusing thing about Greek and it's the same kind of with Russian is that there are letters that look exactly the same as English letters but they're different <laughs> I can't even remember what they are in Greek but it's confusing it would be better if it was like um, I don't know Japanese like hiragana or katakana where it's like it just doesn't look anything like English um, okay, I've got no idea what this is about, but maybe this is my problem, and there's nothing I can do about this one. i got to wait for this one to roll out. I can see that. Okay, I'm going to implement um, awaitable, awaitable workflow outcomes. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. How am I going to find it? Oh, let me look for my original bug where I opened it. Dude, I opened some of the coolest bugs, I have to say. I got like um, another really good one that I opened the other day, which is for um, restarting instances. And look, like Picasso, good artists borrow great artists steal. Um, some of my best ideas are other people's ideas, and I'm just the one who actually opens the bug. Pretty sure, yeah, I opened this one. Ah, so good. I opened it on the 30th of July. This is open source at its best, man. I wrote about the problem, I, I made a workaround, I wrote a blog post about the workaround, and then people jumped in here and just, you know, burnt Ruka, he jumped in, added his 10 cents worth, which, you know, it's more like 10 bitcoins worth. Um, not sure what this guy's name is. <clears throat> MQTT killing it Okay, is there any way to listen to the workflow end event and do some business logic? Hazelcast. Yeah, so uh, Chris Zeldin came up with using the Hazelcast to do it. What a monster Dan Shapiro jumps in from PayK from Tel Aviv would love to see this feature happening you and me both brother Bizona waiting for this to happen. Can we have this future? This feature. I, I could be really awesome. That's cool. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up, man. Yes. And then give it um I could be really awesome. That's cool. Be glad to get this feature. <clears throat> Steven over the top. OTT. Implement a waitable work flow outcome so that's the open feature in the node client which I will move to here this feature for C sharp would be nice I was surprised that this feature doesn't exist I have a use case where a user uploads a file through an open fast serverless handler uh, open fast functions as a service it's like Oracle's um, implementation of like um, lambdas AWS lambdas or Azure web functions. The schedule is a workflow of parsing the field, which may take a while. While the user is waiting in the front end, I'd like to update the view. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can easily do that with, um. Yeah, you could easily do that. Oh, there you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, did I like it already? Oh, what am I doing? Give that a thumbs up. As a workaround, you can generate a UUID for every request. Yeah, okay, cool. Inspiration of the blog post in the example repository. This was indeed the idea I got The open fast tales. Is this Arjun? No, his name is actually Artun Artun Subasi um, Deep D Into the mix self assigns it nine days ago and then just goes full monster on this thing just gets it done love it Okay, so, um, I should reply to this, like, short-lived processes. Is 
It depends what you mean by short lived, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> You're not going to wait for days. Because if you lose the GRPC connection, you lose everything. We are going to need a two-phase commit with this thing. Two-phase commit. Oh, did I just say that? No. Because if you lose your connection, you can't get the workflow back. You can't even figure out which one it was. You don't even have a workflow instance ID. To find the outcome in an exporter. <clears throat> okay, let's make this happen. We're gonna make it happen in the node client. Let's do it. Let's do it. Man, there are 11 pull requests involved in this thing. Oh, no. It's fixed by this pull request. I was like, dude, doing GitHub wrong. Um, I tell you what, man, lack of sleep is like, um, drinking alcohol. Not that I drink alcohol, I haven't for like 20 years, but, um, the judgment impairment, man, I put my green screen up behind me and then, uh, it just fell straight over because I forgot to turn the legs out sideways. Clients can create a workflow instance via a new GRPC request. Oh, this is going to be awesome, man. This is going to be so good. 14 changed files. Let's do it. Okay. Reference grpc.md. The create workflow instance with result rpc. Doc source reference grpcmd. I didn't know this even existed. This is pretty cool. This gateway proto I did know existed. This is the one that I use. Okay. Let's get all up in this uh, source code, hey? Now, if there was a way to view this actual file, oh, and it's exactly where you'd expect it to be too. So cool. Let's move this here, and then let's have a look in here. Okay. Yep, we're about to start work on this. This is the implement a way to workflow outcome task in the ZB node client. Wow, this is cool. Dude, if you're developing on ZB and you're not reading this, what are you even doing? This is a good, good uh, piece of documentation. I mean, look, I've written the whole cl node client without ever reading this because I just read the source for the proto, uh, proto buff definition or whatever it's called. Here we go. Create workflow instance with result RPC. Similar to create workflow instance. Creates a remote procedure call. Creates and starts an instance of the specified workflow. Unlike create workflow instance, the response is returned when the workflow is completed. Note that only workflows with none start event can be started through this command. Sure. I got it. Errors. Status not found. Status failed precondition. Okay. Status invalid argument. 
Okay, we should test for these three different air conditions. Yeah, deploy, so we're really good on that. Okay. Well, I reckon we can just grab the code from here. Let's start coding. Fingers to keys time. Oh. Uh, that's not what we're after. We're after this one. Put this one down. Here we go. So I'm currently on the 0213 branch. I'm going to create a new branch from here for 022. Or should I say ZB22? The O is silent, apparently. It's ZB22. Okay. Now. Blake Embry. Blake Embry. Um, pretty sure Blake Embry is an Australian, man. I remember him from Camp, Camp JS. Let me find out. That was type doc, which automatically generates the, um, no, not that one. Automatically generates the documentation, the API docs. The beautiful API documentation. Blake Embry. Let's check this dude out. Yo, what's up? Wow. Okay. He hasn't written any blogs for like a couple of years about. What's he doing on the GitHubs? Let's see if I recognize him by face. No, he's at Open Door in San Francisco, California. How do I know Blake Embry? Plus one six four. No, that case in the is in the US. Gigster Factory Mulesoft. Man, I know this dude from somewhere. Maybe TypeScript community. Lake Embry. The GitHub is strong with this one. It's cranking it out, man. Does a bunch of code reviews, commits, pull requests. Wow. Me, man. Mine's skewed. I just do tons of commits. Uh, uh, uh. Let's follow this guy. Why not? React on OSX. Okay. Blake Embry. Maybe it's GraphQL. Lee Byron. Blake Embry. Yeah. Anyway, that's... Look, a shiny thing. A diversion. But it's okay. It's all part of the ecosystem. Knowing who's who and what's what. Yep. It's important. It's important. It's human beings. Got to be connected to other human beings. Okay. First thing we're going to do. Change log. Version 0 0.22.0 Feature for sure Hit the tab key my man Feature start with documentation dude Um awaitable workflow outcomes oh. Still has limitations though man Cause like if you are relying on that outcome If you lose that connection if that broker goes down you will never get that back I mean, yeah, that's kind of bad. <clears throat> it's kind of the way it's designed at the moment. It's like if your data is not that interesting to you, but why you're waiting it if it is. But maybe it's a, not an expensive like call. Like, you know, someone's asking for a balance of something. It's easy to compute. They can just ask for it again. Um, sorry, an error occurred retry you know refresh awaitable workflow outcome um okay so the client can ask can initiate a workflow and receive the outcome of the workflow in the response huh 
good. <laughs> In the response, dude. In the response, done. Okay. Um, C, refer to. Dude, I should have left the... Yeah, Shingo Nakamura. Dun dun, let me turn that up a little bit for myself. I can use my remote control. Okay, so we see this, it's number <clears throat> ZB number 296. Save. Okay. So, split this in half. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, push D. Ta-da. Oh. oh, my Millennium Falcon moment. Yes. Speaking of which, Star Wars is coming out in another, like, just over a month. Two months, something like that. And then we're going to nano uh, Docker Compose. And we're going to make this real simple. Where we were using that, we're going to use that that even we did typing fail I'm gonna go to bed tonight man for reals for reals and then we got to make sure we got the latest one and welcome to Australia's internet docker pull boom Latest come on to ZB Snapshot. Here it comes. Oh yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Just leave you with this uh, nice ambient track.
I'm back, but my... It's nearly here, it's nearly here. <clears throat> Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at... Or else nothing at all. Helen Keller. Keeps going to the wrong window. Let's go here. Life is... <clears throat> Life is a succession of lessons which must be lived to be understood. Ralph Waldo Emerson, American philosopher of the 1900s. <clears throat> Reader of the Bhagavad Gita. Great philosophical work. Uh, Helen Keller. Which reminds me, on my list of things to read next is uh, Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. I just finished Pierce Brown's um, latest Red Rising book. Dude, that thing is like Game of Thrones in space, man. It is awesome. Um, and I love it because uh, I'm a classics fan, man. Greek, Latin, classic education. Helen Keller, The Story of My Life. That's the name of her book. And she said life is either a daring adventure or else nothing at all. Comparison of her lectures. Helen Keller, so she was born blind, deaf, dumb, and mute. And she learned how to speak through sign language. Incredible. And then she gave lectures. Okay, that's a review. A reprint. Helen Keller spoke of the joy that life gave her. She was thankful for the faculties and abilities that she did possess and stated the most productive pleasures she had were only curiosity and imagination. Keller also spoke of the joy of service and the happiness that came from doing things for others. Keller imparted that helping your fellow men was one's only excuse for being in this world and in the doing of things to help one's fellows lay the secret of lasting happiness. She also told of the joys of loving work and accomplishment and the happiness of achievement. Although the entire lecture lasted only a little over an hour, the lecture had a profound impact on the audience. Although the entire lecture lasted only a little over an hour, imagine that, it's a YouTube video, it's like over an hour, I'm like, oh my god. Is there a four minute version? Do this thing at double time. Amazing. While in her 30s, Helen had a love affair, became secretly engaged, and defied her teacher and family by attempting an elopement with the man she loved. Wow. Advocate for people with disabilities. That's what she looks like. <clears throat> it's a portrait. A painting. Oh, maybe it's a photo. Could be a portrait photo. Socialist party. She had speech therapy. Okay, so she could speak. She went to New Zealand. Okay. She went to Christchurch in Auckland. She's definitely a legend. 1961, she died. Helen Keller. She was born in 1880. At 19 months old, she contracted an unknown illness, maybe scarlet fever or meningitis. Left her both deaf and blind. Okay, she invented her own home signs and she could distinguish people by the vibration of their footsteps. Yeah, yeah, I can get that. I, I didn't get glasses till I was 11 years old, and the only way I recognized people was by the way their bodies move. So you, you can definitely, um, and then I read the other day that they'd done an experiment with passive Wi-Fi collection, like interference with Wi-Fi fields with people's phones in their pocket, and they used machine learning 
to be able to distinguish who people were by the way their phones move in the Wi-Fi field, dude. But I was like, yep, totally can get it. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Let's get that Visual Studio code back up. And we have the snapshot down. Yes. So now I can just say Docker Compose. That's my uh, alias. Up. Bring up the snapshot. Let's see if this thing works. Okay. First commit. Here we go. We're going to go into the proto file. The ZB protocol file. It's the gateway protocol. Create workflow instance request. Hang on. How does that differ from the standard one? Create workflow instance request. Workflow key. Process ID. Version. Variables. Um, something is not right. Create workflow instance request. It doesn't even have, it's got the same name. And it doesn't even have a uh, message, message. I'm not sure that that's, that's the thing. Let's have a look. Oh. It says it's been merged. Hmm. This is strange. Well. Hmm. That, that is strange. That could be a bug. I know now that we can do this. View the file. And then we just grab on the page. Create workflow instance request. Create workflow instance response. Create workflow instance request. Let's cancel workflow instance. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. Okay. That was a great transition, man. Let's keep it in alphabetical order. So, create workflow instance. We're just going to drop that puppy in there. Boom. That's all there is to that. Okay, so um, save that, and then the next thing to do is to write an interface for it. So I'm going to create an extra panel. Lib interfaces. Okay, I wish there was a way to hide this panel, but without closing it. But if I click that, it's going to kill the processes that are running in it. Move this down here like this. Make it small. <clears throat> okay. Uh, these are not... Oh, they could be. They could be. I think, I think we eventually... Create workflow instance. Here we go. Okay. Well, I'll just paste the gRPC in and then just convert it into... Uh, TypeScript. It's probably an automated tool that does this. Now the reason why I don't use that or go looking for it is because um, typing this in is kind of like Luke Skywalker making his own uh, lightsaber in the in the desert. Yep, that's what that is. This is how you actually get to understand what it is you're working with because you're like, yeah, man, I wrote that. I did. I wrote that. N64, um, N64, 
now this is an interesting one let's have a look see this is what happens when you are like i wrote this thing you you uh you get to know it so it's right at the top type difference from other zb clients protobuf fields of type n64 are serialized as type string in the node library these fields are serialized as numbers long in the go and java client see this grpc thing for why the node library serializes them as string the workflow instance key and other fields that are of type long and the other client libraries are type string in this library fields of type n32 are serialized as type number in the node library so that means that request timeout is going to be a string that's a bummer because that's not at all intuitive string yeah we discovered that by um why doesn't it like that oh you got to export it if an interface is created and no one uses it and no one can access it did it make a sound Jimmy Carr. I worry about my nan. If she's at home by herself and she falls, does she make a sound? Both my grandmothers have passed on, um, and I'm extremely grateful to both of them. One was an immigrant from Samoa, um, moved to New Zealand in the 50s, and the other was from a rural community in New Zealand create workflow instance with and then uh, move to Australia export this interface okay so we know n64 is gonna be strings right I'm just gonna cut and paste here cut and paste is the power programming workflow uh, like this Okay, string, this is a string, this other n32 will be a number, so the bpmn process id is going to be a string. The version is going to be a number. I'll do this, is going to be epic. Awaitable workflow outcomes, man, so good. I don't know if I'm going to use it. Because... The thing about designing systems is, man, you got to design them for their failure mode. That's like, oh, this is all great, yeah, but what happens when it doesn't work? That's what. That's where most of the coding is, man. Defensive coding. It's all good if it works, but what happens when it doesn't work? Um, sorry, we lost your. Uh, you know, we took your money, but we didn't ship the thing to you, and also we can't remember what your order ID is. <laughs> we lost the transaction ID. Yeah, no good. <clears throat> Okay, so the interfaces are now defined. Okay. Now that we've defined the interfaces, do we need to do anything more? Uh, not really. That's pretty much it. We're finished. I'm joking. It is pretty easy, though, because what happens is that this proto buff file gets parsed and then it dynamically constructs the uh see so if we go down to this grpc client in here we can just kill that um this thing loads the package definition and then it just iterates over the uh so this is the connection settings and then it just iterates over the methods and then creates a stream method a sync method and that's it there are no async methods i took them out that's it that's it so from that from that protobuf uh, definition just dynamically generates the grpc client um okay so we go into the zb client we're just going to add like a, a surface api for it and that's it so i like to keep this one in alphabetical order close so after close comes topology, of course. What? What's this? Create worker. Constructor. Where's the create workflow? Oh, it's not in alphabetical order. 
Here's create workflow instance here. Cancel workflow instance. Let's put it in here. It's going to be a public method. It's asynchronous because we're going to do something over in the network and we're going to return a response. Eventually. Public async create workflow instance with result. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this. Good artist copy, great artist steal. Picasso. Create workflow instance with result response. Instance with result response. Create workflow instance with results. See how easy this is, man. Okay, hmm. What's the shape of the input though? Um, <clears throat> the only difference is it's got a, an I, a process ID in the variables, which is cool, but it's also got a timeout. And it's got options. I do have to think about this. I do have to think about this. And the reason I have to think about this is because what we have here is a, a function that takes three it takes three um, three arguments. I'm surprised that that options is not optional. Create workflow instance. Oh, this is weird. What happened to the version? It's not even in there anymore. You can only create the latest version. Oh, options.version. Okay, it's becomes, it becomes optional because it has a uh, an initializer. Okay, weird. Yeah, that's really weird, dude. So, hmm. A better way to do this would be like this. Okay, we make that optional. And then we go... Options equals. So what we do is here we do um we put in all our um put in all our defaults and then we overwrite them with uh, any of the keys that are present on the options that the user passes in and then we have to deal with what happens if they don't pass anything in so we take that out again and then we say if they don't pass anything and we just create that like this why doesn't it like this
What happens if I try to spread undefined? Um, let's see. Let's see what happens if I try to do that. Um, so let A equal... No, no. An error. Whereas if I say let A equal... No. That, and then if I go... Okay, but... Well, I can coerce it like this, because I do know what I'm doing. Ta-da! Magic. Type coercion not allowed, so I can do this. Oh, huh. Type assertion not allowed. Use the as syntax instead, dude. Make up your mind. Um, no. Like that. Type assertion on object literals is forbidden. Use a type annotation instead. No object literal type assertion. You know what? Disable. I did it. Now. Option, opera, operation options, no retry. I can do the same thing here. Oh, it's getting disgusting now. Negative one for latest. Max retries and retry. If retry is true, mm -hmm. doesn't look like that max retries is actually used. Oh, this bothers me, man. Okay, so... The problem here is that... 
semantically, Max retries, you know, timeout usually applies to the well it applies to things like um the initiation of the operation but this is like a first order first class kind of uh aspect of this request create a workflow instance with a result Um, okay, so it actually has a result type as well because it's going to return something. So I'll make it fully parameterized so that you can have type safety if you want it. And then we'll set that type safety to not any generic workflow output variables. Yep, there you go. It's the comma you want. Oh, yeah. There you go. Happy now? <clears throat> no, it's not happy because it's not parameterized in here. The shape of the results. String. I'm not exposing my users to strings. What doesn't it like about this? Oh, because you're not returning it. Yeah, okay, got it. Might have to overload this operations thing. Might have to do it. I think we will. I think we're gonna have to do it. And then we should give it a default TTL as well in that case. Oh, let's stick to the interface semantic. With result request, request timeout. Okay. Which is of type string. Pretty sure we can pass in a number. And then we've got to give it a default. Like this. Yeah, okay. Um, semantically sucks doing like that, but whatever. Should. I mean, even the fact that I'm doing that shows me that it's wrong. And I'm just going to roll with it because, you know, life is not perfect. It's just not. Okay, so. We're going to make the request timeout. Um, minute. That's why I was on it about the uh, alphabetical ordering, because this library was written in a way where it was like alphabetical ordering for everything. It does make it easier to find stuff.
<clears throat> okay. Copy and paste the code and then just make the modifications that I need to on it. This operation execute operation thing is part of the internal state machinery to do client side retries. Um, well, Zegut. <laughs> <laughs> 